So hello and welcome to another episode. Uh, this week um, I'm doing something a bit different. Uh, it's uh, part of a irregular series uh, that I'm calling How Did I Take That Photo? And in that I'll take you through um, the beginning to end process. Uh, it's probably a little bit risky uh, this week uh, because uh, I don't actually know uh, whether there's going to be anything worth photographing uh, today. So I'm down here today and uh, I don't know if you can see behind me, around me is just the decaying woodwork of uh, years of sea defences uh, that I'm guessing are pretty much now going to be left to rot. Um, and so I guess, I guess what you sort of see here is uh, there's a complete lack of minimalism or a complete lack of simplicity in the shot. But I've got a um, line of, of, of wood uh, going into the sea, it's got the waves breaking over it uh, and what I want to do is just capture the waves breaking around the wood uh, and play with the shutter speed essentially just get um, something nice aesthetically pleasing to look at and simplify you know what we've got around us um, there's, there's no point trying to take uh, you know broad photos of all this uh, in my view, it just looks a mess. Uh, I, I've been walking around here a while, um, just trying to work out whether there's, you know, a way of uh, uncluttering some of this and getting a broader view. But uh, I think um, focusing in is going to get us the best um, out of the location today. The uh, sky is fairly uh, overcast. Uh, there's sun up there, but it's a sort of hazy sunshine. Um, so. You know, it doesn't doesn't really matter because um, I'm going to put some filters on uh, anyway. You've got the wood going in, you've got the sea coming in, and the waves breaking. So uh, my camera's set up on quite a low tripod, and um, essentially just been looking at the waves coming in. So I've fitted um, my remote um, trigger. I did have it on timer. Uh, but um, what that means is you can't control uh, when the shutter releases very easily to uh, coincide with the wave breaking just at the right time. Um, so what I'm looking for is just the right sort of wave uh, breaking. I think the tide's actually probably going out, maybe. Uh, I tried it with a three-stop filter. I think that was giving me um, a third of a second. Uh, and I stopped to a six-stop uh, filter and if I just have a look at this it's now we're now on two seconds so um, I'm just going to take a couple of shots uh, and then we'll talk about them okay so what I've been waiting for essentially is uh, the water uh, a larger wave to break uh, and then run back um, down um, the beach which then gives me a pleasing effect um, and so uh, on the camera uh, I got my ISO set as low as possible, um, f11 uh, and the light is, is changing because of the sun so it's just fluctuating in a two second and a two and a half second exposure. Uh, as I say I've got a six stop uh, on the front and I've just zoomed in a little because what I don't want to do is catch any of the sky uh, in this image. I want purely to focus on um, these these groins in front of me. So the other thing I'm conscious of is that as we look down this line of woodwork um, you've got them overlapping and what I didn't want to do is uh, get too much of that overlap in my shot so I'm just going to go and check uh, my shot again um, and we'll just see whether I need to just change position slightly. Okay so we're back uh, at home and uh, I'm going to show you uh, my workflow for editing uh, this photo. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, this you know isn't a portfolio shot by any means um, but um, I hope what uh, it will show you is that um, my editing workflow um, what uh, I was trying to um, achieve with the shot when I when I saw it uh, out, out there on the beach 
uh, and, and how I bring those thoughts uh, into the finished shot. Also, uh, as I said on the video, I was um, on Suffolk Coast. You know, there was some great stuff to photograph there. Um, unfortunately, I vlogged um, only this one, uh, but I'll show you the other photos uh, at the end of the video. Okay, so the first thing I want to um, show you is that the um, movement of the water is very dependent on the um, speed of the shutter. Uh, and so this image here was at, uh, this was a fifth of a second. And you can see that um, we've hardly uh, blurred the, the water at all. Uh, and you can very much see um, the beach uh, very clearly and the waves very clearly. If we move to this one's half a second, um, and we're starting to see those white lines across the um, image and um, we're blurring blurring those blurring that water and then I guess what I'm trying to do in when I took this was to capture a few of those wooden uprights and, and not really have a, a delineation between uh, beach and sea or, or even individual waves um, and so if we go to this, which is the final image that we're going to edit, um, I changed the composition slightly. Uh, it's it's uh, you know, focused in a little, a little more um, just on um, a few of those uprights uh, and at I think it's two and a half seconds uh, we've uh, managed to um, create that um, you know almost smoky effect and so you know <laughs> Maybe we don't know whether we're 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 looking at um, wooden uprights uh, in water or wooden uprights in in fog, um, but you know it's it's really sort of um, captured um, something quite simple uh, out of what was a very complex scene. And the first thing uh, I'm going to do um, with this image is, is crop it down because um, I think if we have a look at a square crop, maybe. Um, yeah, a square crop. Um, we don't need um, possibly these elements on the side here. Um, really, all I'm interested in is the uprights and uh, ensuring that they have enough space um, around them, but uh, not too much. And um, we've now got this diagonal coming up through here and up into there, um, and I and I think that's better. Uh, and then the next thing uh, we're going to do. Is, is just warm the, the um, image up a bit uh, and the other thing you'll see when we do this is that um, I'm actually uh, getting more detail in that swirling water uh, and you can see uh, the beach um, coming through um, underneath um, those waves uh, and, I, and I just you know think that that's um, given me a little bit more a little bit more texture um, without over complicating it and we can what we we'll also see here is that actually um, my histogram doesn't go all the way to the right, so uh, potentially move the whites just a little bit. Um, what we don't want to do is um, lose the detail. So, and um, Perhaps the next thing I'd, I'd do here is is adjust um, my shadows um, and just see if I bring the shadows up, do I get extra detail in in that seaweed? Just a careful balance. So around twenty, um, then I'm probably getting uh, the best of the detail. Um, and because uh, this was shot with a long exposure, um, it's it's made the uh, wood. Um, seem very shiny um, and very reflective and I'm just going to um, bring perhaps the saturation down a touch yeah, just to minus nine um, and on the hue and saturation sliders uh, if you click on here uh, and then Point to the area you want to desaturize. You can drag that down and just take the saturation of that wood down a touch. So 
that's minus 16 on the orange and minus 3 on the yellow. To be honest, I don't think it needs an enormous amount uh, more work um, doing to it. Um, but the only thing I really don't like is this area here, um, which was um, a piece of the woods that went across in between these. Uh, and I'd sooner not have it. But um, if we tried to do that in Lightroom, um, it would make a very poor job of, of removing this um, from the image. So what we can try and do is, is put this into Photoshop. Uh, so if I right click, I said done on that. If I right click and uh, edit in. Okay, so we've got it in Photoshop now and to start with, I'm just going to zoom in a little so we can see what we're working with. If we then select the lasso tool, and draw around the object and sort of draw just slightly outside. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so we've selected our object uh, and then you can do Content Aware Fill, which is Edit Content Aware Fill. This is a piece of magic um, from Photoshop. I'm not sure how it's doing it, but what it tries to do is essentially paint in what it thinks the background might look like and um, okay so what you can see now is it's the window here it's removing this from the image it will show you here what the image looks like afterwards and you can zoom in and as you can see um, it's done a pretty good job so if we just select OK, then we close this but save it. OK, so a first pass edit, I think that's pretty good. Um, that's, you know, as I said before, we've simplified something that was very complex. Um, we've got something that's, I'd say, pleasing but not you know, excellent. Um, but it, what it does do is it, it gives me uh, encouragement to go back to um, that location and try and get something better which you know given uh, different tides exposing different uprights um, you know there's every opportunity to get something there that is you know really portfolio um, worthy and that will do us for a first edit of this video uh, so I think we've captured something um, from the scene which will give us encouragement to go back um, and given different tides and, and, and slightly different lighting uh, I have every confidence that get something there that would, you know, essentially uh, or could um, join your portfolio. And, and all we've done is um, we've focused down and simplified um, as much as possible, removed things that didn't add anything to um, our, our feeling f uh, from the area. Um, and so, you know, I think that's a, it's a good... Uh, way of dealing with complexity so thank you for watching if you've uh, liked this uh, video then please like uh, any comments um, stick them below and I'll answer them um, please subscribe and I'll see you next time <laughs>